Take two. <laughs> You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. And today we have a How to Lutheran with Bree episode. I don't think we've done one of these in a while. So this is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. And we're in the season of Lent, so I'm assuming that this is going to have something to do with the season of Lent. But take it away, Bree. That's correct, Sarah. Um, (laughs) So one of the things that I think... Lutherans in particular struggle with at during the season of Lent is sort of this concept of fasting or giving something up for Lent. I I know a lot of Lutherans do it, but I also know that there's a lot of Lutherans who like swear against that. And mm. I think that that is probably indicative of a larger issue that we have as Lutherans in that We tend to dwell in paradoxical situations Mm -hmm. and most everything that we do is like intention. And so I think Lent and deciding to fast or not fast during this season um, is is really one of those things that it's one of those not necessarily hot button issues, but it is one of those um, topics that uh, we as Lutherans, I think, are sort of split on. And it comes up every year. And I've I've seen it interpreted in a variety of ways. You know, some people give things up for Lent because it helps them, it, it, it removes a distraction from them that allows them to be more mindful of the season. Um... I don't, I imagine that other denominations fast for reasons other than that. I don't know if it's like a works righteousness thing or anything like that. Um, But I've also seen Lutherans uh, sort of give something up or enhance their lives during Lent as sort of an act of, okay, this is the sanctified life that I've been given as a baptized child of God. So... The Bible tells me that this is this is basically the guideline for my life, and so I'm going to act accordingly during the season of Lent and put special emphasis on an activity or abstaining from an activity to sort of celebrate the season as well. You are totally right, though, that we have a paradoxical approach to Lent and fasting as a church that part of us, and this is, this goes into our relationship to church tradition sort of in general, that part of us really craves that connection to the broader past of the church, that we crave the formal structure that we see in that great tradition. And yet part of us is like, well, Christian freedom, you can't put me in a box. Mm -hmm. You can't put God in a box. Um, That these are all human traditions. And so they should all be on the table all the time. And so we have this sort of tension and it it really does come to a head at at Lent. You know, you think you compare um, what the sorts of conversations that take place in Lutheran circles to like Catholic and Orthodox circles where, you know, Lenten fasting is prescribed. Right. If you, you're supposed to do it, mm-hmm. whether you do it or not is up to you, but it means you're either a good Catholic or a bad Catholic. Right. Whereas in Lutheran, you can be a good Lutheran and fast or not fast. And so it's a constant, again, source of tension and a little anxiety for people as they try to figure out, whether and to to what extent to actually mm-hmm. participate in this, you know, fast and sight fasting mm-hmm. time. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do any of you give up something for Lent? Not in any regularity. I'm usually one of the ones that likes to add something instead, instead of, subtract. of subtracting. That's good. Yeah. I haven't been great at that this year. I have often given up things for Lent and um, have gotten great benefit from it. 
I have given up. We we did screen free Lent one year. The kids oh. hated that. <laughs> of course um, they did. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up alcohol. That one backfired on me because I gave up alcohol for Lent once and found out I was pregnant like a week before oh, Easter. Snap. Whoops. So that ended up being a really long <laughs> fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> World's longest I've Lenten up, fast. I've given up sweets. I've given, you know, I've, I've, I've done most of the the usual suspects at least once. Um, there was one Lent. This one actually changed my life, where I uh, gave up all drinks except water, milk, and juice. And we were too poor to afford much milk or juice at the time, so <laughs> I ended up drinking so much water and feeling so much better that I've. Can yeah. t- carried on that that healthy habit ever since. So I, and, but I won't say that all of this fasting uh, has been a hugely crucial part of my spiritual life. Mm. Um, I do it because I think it's beneficial. I think it's good for us to say no to ourselves mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, not just always say you want that brownie, have it. Sometimes you have to say, no, you can't have that brownie. Mm -hmm. And it's a useful discipline Mm -hmm. to have a time set aside for you to do that. Um, But honestly, spiritually, what I've mostly gotten from Lent is what a poor, miserable sinner I am because I'm really, really bad at all of these Lenten (laughs) disciplines. Yeah, yeah. It crushes me that I can't even do a simple thing. Like if I were to say my Lenten discipline is I'm going to floss daily for six weeks, I would still fail. (laughs) And, you know, that just brings me lots of fodder to you know, confession and absolution of I thought I was a good person, but I can't even floss for six weeks straight. Good thing we do Um, that every Sunday. (laughs) This is true. Does that answer your question, Brie? Yeah, absolutely. I I love Lent, but I stink at Lent. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When I've done fasting in the past, wasn't even a true... So I fast normally. I fast twice a week as just my, my regular way of eating. So trying to do fasting as far as eating goes for Lent, doesn't feel like what I think its intended purpose is, at least not on the scale that I would need to do it to set it apart from my regular um, life. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So in the past, like one thing I did that I I really appreciated that year, and I'll probably do it again, I don't do it every year, but uh, one year I chose to give up listening to anything in my car. So... I was silent in my car rides to and from work and Hmm. all these places. It it allowed for a lot of time of contemplation and working on, at that time I was also working on some memorization to like, I was working on on re-memorizing the small catechism. So that was a good time to to practice Mm -hmm. (laughs) that as I sat, sat in the car. But it was one of those that, really struck me how much of my life is normally distracting. And I think that's Mm -hmm. often what, what fasting as far as like the spiritual discipline goes, like, yeah, there is the element of saying no to yourself. And that is a good, a good thing. And we're told it's a, it's a, it's one of the, one of the fruits of the spirit, right? Am I making that up? It's one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, There we go. There we go. Um, It's also one of those daily bread things. It's a, it's Mm -hmm. a good thing, but also I think it's, it's removing, sometimes it's removing distractions uh, so that we are able to contemplate, I don't know, be more, be more contemplative. There's a lot, a lot of our life in modern American culture that removes all opportunities for contemplation putting that back into your life yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i like being able to focus on uh devotions and hymnody and and all of the extra church services and uh opportunities to be in god's word more during lent and i mean and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to give something up in order to gain that Mm -hmm. some people will use the time of fasting, like if I don't eat lunch for these days of the week, I will use that time instead to have a devotional time. But you don't have to. It's it's not an obligation. It's a mm-hmm. it's a good practice to have, mm-hmm. not an obligation. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so easy to to want it to be an obligation because then we can point to it and say, Hey, look at this thing I'm doing that doesn't actually 
mean anything in the long run in terms of salvation. We aren't saved because we fast <laughs> during Lent, which is a very good thing because all of us would fail at that. <laughs> well, and I, I think that the cynic in me, and I'm admittedly getting better at this, but for a while I was very much like a Lenten fasting special observation sort of naysayer. <laughs> You know, as, as as a Lutheran, like we have grace and I don't have to cut anything out of my life to contemplate or mm -hmm. celebrate or observe Lent. Like I would look at somebody who gives up chocolate or gives up social media for Lent and I'd be like, that's just self-flagellation. They just want to feel miserable for 40 days. And so... I've si I've sort of stepped away from that <laughs> mode because I, I I think that there's more to it than that. And I'm mean, obviously hearing all of your accounts of of your observation and your habits and your traditions. Like there's so much more to it than like removing something from your life that is a distraction. Um, rather, I think that if you're going to observe Lent in a certain way do something that brings you joy, you know, whether it's removing a distraction or spending more time in the word or, I mean, you name it. Um, I feel like any, and truthfully, I don't really engage with the Lenten fasting thing. Um, now, all that to say, I, I don't think that that will always be the case. I mean, I'm certainly open to practicing something that, you know, would be, be beneficial to me in the long run but I'm not a believer of you know the traditional giving something up for Lent so that you know I can feel bad about myself for 40 days which I feel like sometimes it comes across as that yeah well and, and that's as you're talking I'm thinking of of the the cultural versus religious approaches to this too because mm -hmm. there are people who aren't christian or aren't religious or at least regularly uh, attending church or something who who will still give something up for lent because it's just what you do right. during <clears throat> lent and they may fall into that category of i am trying to make myself a better person right. by doing this because it's what culture tells me that i should be doing this during lent so that i can be a better person on the or other it's, side it's like a it's like a a feat of strength almost mm -hmm. like a can yeah. I can I make it for 40 yeah. days and pass through the fires of temptation right and like and if you emerge there's some sort of spiritual metal <laughs> that you get to put yeah. on your lapel or whatever yeah, it doesn't work that way <laughs> it's not how it works it's not how it works well it is it is interesting that the the length of Lent and the timing of Lent in the in the year, especially for people in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, this doesn't work the same for like Australians. Um, but Lent is six weeks long, 40 days, which, as we all know, is approximately twice the amount of time it takes to really set a habit. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got this period of time that's short enough that anyone can sort of make it uh, and long enough to actually change some habits because our habits are so powerful mm -hmm. um it, you know either in leading us in a good way or a bad way so much of what we do each day is dictated by habits so it's important to part to, to to pay attention to what are the habits that are telling us what to do the other thing is that lent is well a pretty miserable time of year weather wise mm. um and traditionally for the you know subsistence farmers food wise mm -hmm. you're you know out of your fall stores and your spring stuff hasn't come in yet so it's a very practical time to look around and say the world is cold and gray and i'm hungry and you know how can i find spiritual meaning in this bleak time of year and so lent gives you a, a framework in which to do that i'm uh in michigan right now sorry sarah and uh, i'm looking out I'm the so window jealous. <laughs> well, don't be because late February, early March, Lent is a terrible time to be in oh, Michigan. Oh yes, I remember. <laughs> One time, I, as far as I know, just about the only time that um, Adrian Hines has been in Michigan, she came up to speak at in, at Zion and Mount Pleasant, uh -huh. um, and I went to go see her up there, and. She came up at the, about this time of year, and I said, please, don't judge Michigan based on right now. Come back in September. Yes. <laughs> but Lent-wise, if, you know, it's a time when 
the spiritual life of the church and the physical life of the world sort of walk together into a dark place for a while. And we find out that it's not pointless to go there because in your life, there will always be dark times, tribulations, as much as you want to find your joy, Brie, sometimes you can't find it. Right. But if you have practice in dealing with that, with in leaning on God, when those dark days come, then you're that much better equipped to handle it because sure. Lent can strike at any time of year. That is true. Mm-hmm. That's a fair point. The end goal of all of this also is to point us to Christ too, mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, that that is the point of meditation and devotion and self-control and uh, and all of this fasting uh, is is to point our minds to Jesus and to his suffering for us uh, during the season of Lent. And if if the end goal of a fast or of self-control or of adding something isn't isn't that goal, ultimate goal, then maybe not the right reason to do it. Sure. Right. If you're fasting to lose weight. Probably not a good thing know. to do during Lent. <laughs> well, I mean, do it, but but don't don't say, oh, this is this great spiritual thing that I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, just say I'm fasting to maintain a healthy weight. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> there is a difference. And that's good too. <laughs> I will say that self control is the smallest fruit in my fruit basket right now. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe always has been. It's a hard one. It's so hard. It is yeah. so hard. I mean, I personally like one of my personality traits is sort of this lack of filter and no so, <laughs> really yeah and so, i mean it's some it gets me into trouble sometimes but also like that's that's my personality that's who i am and so it's hard when when it comes to things like this and maybe that's kind of why i naysay it a little bit is because don't make me put a fil- like don't filter me don't censor me <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, Lenten traditions. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard enough when someone else tells you no, but then when you have to tell yourself yeah. no, and the only person you have to argue with is yourself. Yeah, don't tell myself that is what hard. to do. So. <laughs> that is hard. One of the things I know I've struggled with through years is along those lines of personality versus growing, growing in my faith growing growing in I think you led with the sanctified life mm-hmm. sort of thing and like what does that look like how does the one affect the other and sometimes um I I haven't come up with a with an answer mm. but there's I'm convinced that most often when I resist it the most that's clearly that's got to be actually the the old Adam in me that's right. not actually that's not actually who I am. Like, right. I think it is because it's very persuasive voice uh, <laughs> saying, no, this is who you are. Right. You can't change it. If you do, you're cha- You're not, you're, you know, you you're not your true essence. to yourself. Right, right. right. Yeah. Um, but I, so I think then there's like that fear of who will I be if I'm not this? And do I trust that? I don't know. Do I trust, do I trust that? who I am in Christ is actually the real right who me. I want right. is, is the is person really, that I've curated yeah, yeah. who I also am in Christ that's, that's a, a hard gigantic thing. dilemma this is like a Some, whole nother episode that's a whole yeah. Yeah. developing that's a right now that's like a six month series <laughs> and we need to wrap this mm. up soon so <laughs> okay I have a pair of questions though mm. okay three. do it oh yes because obviously Lent is not your thing it but ain't. you're trying to decide whether maybe it should be your thing at some point that's right um, here's a pair of questions if you are the sort of person who, like me, does something for Lent, is it, are you fasting for Lent to grow closer to Christ and to understand more deeply his love for you? Or are you fasting for Lent to make yourself a better person? Okay, on the flip side, are you not fasting for Lent because you want to live in grace and you don't want to subject yourself to, you know, a law that is not required of you because Christ has done everything? Or are you not fasting for Lent because, uh, 
you don't want to tell yourself how to live. You don't want to give up <laughs> anything. I mean, it's a trap. You want to keep the chocolate and the alcohol and the, all the rest of this, you know, eating eating heavily every day. So what is your, it, as in so many other things, what is your motivation for either fasting or not fasting? And that can help you make the decision. That's true. That and I so think- so good, Rachel. <laughs> As much as I, I put up this front of like, don't tell me what to do, I'm my own person. Like, I feel like for me, it is basically that third option. It's mm. that we live on the other side of the resurrection. And I think when you're sort of looking at Lenten fasting as sort of a requirement or a, you know, a, what did you call it? Obligation. A, pres- a prescription and obligation. Mm. You had called it earlier amongst like the Roman yeah. Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you look at it like that, then yeah, I don't know that I would want to fast for the simple fact that that's not what's required of us. But at the same time, I think we can all agree that that's not always why people fast for Lent. Mm. Yeah. And since that isn't actually something that our church is telling you then why not do it? Because our church isn't actually saying you must do it. That's a good point. Our church doesn't say that. Here's the other thing, too. (laughs) Like, (laughs) because I, because I marched to the beat of my own drum, like, oh, man, I don't want to give something up that everybody Uh gives up. Right. I want to be, I want to be the wild card. Yeah. Only wear black for six weeks. I thought about that this morning, actually. I was like, no color or like no jewelry. That, that would be so interesting hard. Yeah. What would I? Not for I me, know. ladies. Not for me. <laughs> no, your task would be to wear fancy exactly. jewelry for six weeks. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd give up fasting for lunch. If that was <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I would be open to it. I would be open to observing Lent in a special way, but I feel like. I feel like it would require some additional thought, like what in my life or what habit, what behavior, what is something that would be beneficial to do that wouldn't be such a painstaking challenge that it would be pert near impossible to mm-hmm. to accomplish. And so, I mean, I have another... I mean, about a year to think about it. That's right. I, I mean, I could start now, even. I mean, there's oh, still yeah. how many days left. Yeah. Most, but even most, by just doing days. the self-examination, you're doing, you're understanding the whole point mm-hmm. yeah, of, right. of the Lenten fast is to look at yourself and say, what is getting in the way mm-hmm. of me focusing on the cross of Christ? Mm-hmm. And maybe this is a time for me to step back from that. Right. Yeah. Practice it. Try mm-hmm, it out. Sure. See yeah. if I can still have a happy, meaningful life without fill in the blank. I would hope so. Uh, and usually, it turns out you can. Any yeah, final put, thoughts? I'm put some thought into that. I'm really put a interested. Bow on this. I'm really interested on uh, what our Facebook folks out there are doing for Lent. If they do anything, um, I'd really be interested to hear people's thoughts and opinions on s- observing Lent with the r- gentle reminder to everyone out there that it's. Not necessarily something that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is like, you have to do this. So no. please voice your opinions on Facebook if you'd like. We'll open up a thread for that, but, you know, keep it. I'm sure we'll have opinions. Keep it respectful <laughs> and of the idea that, I mean, it's it's beneficial, but it's not for everybody. Yeah. I also want to put a plug in for the March 2020 edition of the Lutheran Witness because it is literally all about fasting and do temptation. It, mm-hmm. So... Some of those articles will be at uh, lcms.org slash witness. Some of them will be online. Hopefully, a lot of our listeners are, are Lutheran Witness subscribers. Mm-hmm. That would be even better. Hopefully. Since Hopefully. we have like it's wonderful. the I am. former editor of the Lutheran Witness. <laughs> right. I know. And <laughs> Do I'm, us a kindness. I'm a big champion for the current editor, Pastor Askins. Yes. Is a good, good uh, person for the job. So. Yes. Absolutely. He's wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. So check out the March 2020 edition of the Lutheran Witness. There's a, a whole there's a whole series of articles on fasting if you really want to learn more. Or just go ask your pastor. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you about fasting Hopefully. and obligation and sanctified living and Lent and all of these things. So 
You can find all of this conversation, as Bree said, in the Facebook group, the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Facebook group. Join our conversations there. Voice your opinions. Have some have some good dialogue with some other Lutheran ladies. You can find all of our episodes at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm a sinner and a saint. <laughs> and I'm still just Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. Start over again. <laughs> I was looking at the stopwatch and wondering when the minutes would show up. Sorry. We are beyond help. Oh, it's been such a long week. <laughs> I'm ready this time. Right. Take two.